This is the city, Springfield, Oregon, an old timber town living in the shadow of the big city next door. But Springfield has its claims to fame, a famous author, the setting of a prolific cartoon, and home to the greatest Mopar restoration shop in the world. I work here. I carry a wrench. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This time on Graveyard Cars, Mark and Will dive deep into two of the only three A-body cars that the shop has ever completed, going head-to-head -head on the good, the bad, and the ugly. This thing had 70s butchering done to it. A 1969 A57 383 four-speed Cuda in B5 blue, and the ultra-rare, one-of-a-kind, 1971 Heavenly Option, Mr. Norm's 340 six-pack Demon in FE5 Rally Red. So you were at the point where it was just keep building, don't stop, got to get this car done. But will Mark's competitive nature take over? I'm not competitive at all. Nobody sabotaged anything. It was just Cousin Dougie. Find out on this episode of Graveyard Cars. Beneath the fog, behind the rust, sometimes they come back. There's only one internationally recognized Mopar master, Mark Warman, joined by his friends, family, and dream team, the Ghouls. Nobody wants to take on the stuff that we take on. Reviving the past. 100% untouched survivor. Resurrecting the icons of American muscle. We are the Shaolin priests of Mopar. Uncovering stories. It's the baddest car we have here. And restoring dreams. It's the most iconic muscle car on the planet. Putting cars back where they belong. <laughs> on the road. Here we go. Beyond a passion. Oh, that's wild. One man's obsession. <laughs> with Mopar Perfection. This is Graveyard Cars. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was Friday, January 3rd, 2014. It was cold and cloudy, but not a drop in the sky. Rare for the Willamette Valley. My department received a phone call from the desperate owner of a rare car that had sadly met its end. After learning the circumstances that led to the untimely death of this ill-fated vehicle, my partners and I agreed to take the case. This is the story of that car. I was working the weekend shift, Sunday, May 18th, 2014. It was cooler than usual, but with Oregon's typical on-again, off-again sprinkles. We got a call from a wary, out-of-state Dodge enthusiast regarding a demon that was bought new off the lot of the notorious Kraus car family of Chicago, headed by the infamous Don, known simply as Mr. Norm. After reviewing the facts of the unsolved case, we decided to take the demon head on. This is the story of that car. We have two very special A-bodies that got finished recently at Graveyard Cars, and I thought because they're both A-bodies, it'd be cool to feature them both, and a little bit of a kind of a undercurrent that was going on at the same time on these two particular cars. So just to uh, back up a little bit, these cars have been here since 14. Yeah. So, I know unfortunate but they both came in within a few months of each other it's interesting the cuda came in i want to say first and then the demon came in just a few months later something like that both really cool cars hadn't done any a bodies really to speak of at the time they came in now later we did jim delucci's right, duster. 72 duster 340 car 
But these were the first of the A bodies that we were doing. And I kind of found that I was gravitating towards the CUDA, probably because it's a big block, it's older school stuff that I was used to seeing on the roads, where you always kind of had a little bit of a soft spot for the cool little the red. demon, the red. Yeah, it's good colors, good everything. Mr. Mr. Norms, Norms. yep, all good, all good stuff. And we don't do a lot of them, so it's nice to have two A bodies in it almost the same time. Kind of why I wanted to feature this right here is just because we got two of them together, and they both left it nearly the same time. The Cuda, the '69 Cuda, the A57 car. That means it's a 383 four-speed right. car. And the Demon was a 340 with a Mr. Norm six-barrel six-pack on it. It'd be a Dodge, be calling it. Obviously. Pack. Obviously, yeah. So one of the things that was happening because of this, both cars sat for a long time before we got working on them because it was about the same time that we moved into the new shop. But once we got the cars in progress where they were getting disassembled, I noticed a little cool breeze over here oh, was kind of angling at me, meaning I think he wanted to see the demon done a little bit before mine. I'm not a competitive person by nature. That it, you can do the face, but it has, has no impact on what I'm you're saying. Very, you're people. highly competitive. I'm, very, I'm not competitive at all. The fact that I knew Will was kind of edging to get it done for whatever motivation because he liked it. Yeah. Just some cars move faster than others. Some cars do move some faster. Some don't need as much repair. repair. No, that's very true. They move a lot quicker when somebody works late nights behind your back to get them done and pays other people under the table to be able to come out and get something. So they do go quicker that way. What you don't know at home is while this little unwritten competition is going on, I drew the shorthand. The 69 Cuda was a mess. It oh, was geez. a miracle of metal work alone, unlike the Cherry that you chose. The Cuda needed a front nose, and that was it. Oh. Put, well, cut the old one off, must, put a new one on. I have to disagree with that. Now, the 69 Cuda definitely is a rare car, all right? It's B5 Blue, it's a real A57 car. Absolutely. Which is a yard in the four speed. Yeah. Come on. Anyway, they made 130 of those cars in the real Cuda model. It was a good, complete little car when it came in. For the most part, the engine was gone uh, when it got here. It did have an engine stuffed into the into the engine compartment, but it wasn't the right one for the car. So we knew it didn't have the original engine. But the numbers matching transmission and all the rest of the car was there, and it was in pretty darn decent shape to get started with. The Demon. So when we got the Demon, the disassembly was kind of already done. So it was just kind of a roller on casters. So at that point, it would just wrap up a few little things and then get it off to the dipper. What was the metal like on that car? Well, when we got it back from the dipper, we realized we had a bunch of issues. We had quarters and trunk floor and extensions and all the normal stuff. All the normal stuff? Yeah. Did you do a main floor in it? No. Yeah, you did. Yeah, we put a main floor in it. Yeah. Did you do the front aprons too? No. Yeah, you did. How about the rear body panel? Solid. Solid? Yeah. He is right about that. We didn't have to replace that. Did we do left and right quarters? Obviously. Well, we did a section of the one of the quarters, and the other one was a full quarter. You know, we have so many cars They're all written here. down I, on the notes. I, I don't need the notes. My car came back before your car, so at that point, I was able to get the guys right to work on the metal. Isn't that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's just weird that your car actually left before mine, too, considering mine showed up three months earlier. I'm not... We're not, no, right. we're not keeping... My car showed up disassembled. This isn't an go. advent calendar. <laughs> right. But my car showed up ready to go. Yours wasn't. And because that, your car was so rare, you did a lot of pictures and documentation. So it sat here for months before we could even get on it. My car was ready. How many Demons did they build? Mr. Norm's Demons, four-speed, houndstooth interior, FE5 yeah, Rally, Rally Red. Red. Yeah, what's that number again? 1,300. It's one. Sweet. Can I finish? On that one. Oh yeah, 1300 well, minus 1299. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so once the car came back, at this point, I was able to give it to the metal guys. They had the car for about six months, which is a little longer than what they should have, but it's really important to get the metal perfect so by the time it goes out to the mud guys, their job is even less. So after six months, that process was done. We had a couple months out there in the body shop then it came over to me where kind of all the real magic happens. See what he did there? See what he did there? He I just did. glossed over all of the metal work. Six months of two guys working metal work, yeah. George and Adam just working their tails off on that car. He glossed over all, yeah, yeah, quarter yeah, 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 what is it, whatever. But then it got over to me, the magic man. <laughs> well, no, that's just where, that's what people want to see. No, why? 
I beg to differ. I see the social media, and I don't think that they do want to see they that. They love seeing cars being painted. Yeah, Better. they've seen every single car and every single color. Is and there any color it. we haven't painted yet? Oh. Give me one 1971 color that we haven't painted yet. Green. Season two, <laughs> episode three, no, 19, 446 four different greens. to go. Four F3, three. F5, and F7. We haven't done GF5, eight. We haven't GF3, done eight. and GF7. Why are you rocking because that's what I do when I start rattling off numbers. Does that make you happy? Are you getting flustered? Okay. Have you done a Have you done a GA4 car? Yeah. Oh, really? Which one's a, a GA4? Oh, oh, that's A4. Yeah. Yeah. What about a GA4? You just drop the G. There mm. you go. A4. Same color. Yeah. Gotcha. What about Cobb's Winchester? Okay, hey, oh, that was a good looking car. Yeah, okay, good. just stay focused. You're making this way longer than what it needs to be. Wait, what was he supposed to be talking about? The Blue Petastar, the sign of Chrysler and Plymouth, coming through with extra care in engineering. With Chrysler and Plymouth, extra care in engineering starts with a bare metal, unibody. Underneath, three-sided steel frame members are welded directly to unibody steel floor to form box section members. Unibody's welded-in support beams form a structure that surrounds the passengers and extends to all parts of the car body. All contribute to Unibody's overall strength. Now the real pain and the real magic came in on the 69 Cuda. This thing was a mess. This thing had 70s butchering done to it. It had fender well exit headers punched through the front inner fenders. So they had to be replaced, but we decided to replace them as a complete unit. So what I'm Much saying simpler. is this, what? Well, it's much simpler. Remember what I was saying at the start of this? It's a, I said you cut the nose off, you put a new one on. No, the, you don't just call up Walter Chrysler and order a nose. You have to find one, you have to cut it, trim it, you have to pre-fit it, you have to build in all the sleeves. Yeah. Okay, so my point is the 69 Cuda needed a cow cut front nose on it, which we put on it. It needed main floor, trunk floor, under seat pan. Rear body panel got replaced, both quarter panels, both inner and outer wheelhouses, rear frame rails. I mean, there was a lot of metal. This there car, was. if it wasn't damaged and it wasn't butchered, then it was Why rusted. did you reference me? Well, just because some of the paint book I've seen come out of your You've never seen But he's done a lot better in it. Oh. Are you kidding? There was a damn bumblebee in the roof of the 71 Cuda, man. How the hell do you let bumblebee. a bumblebee get in What's there and get in your paint? The fire. What the fly? Was it a fly? Yeah. Well, the car was orange. I'm just saying that the Cuda had a lot more metal work done to it. In our now, it was a big job. Floor, trunk floor, yeah, we got it. It was a big job. No, it was a lot bigger than the Demon. But at the end of the day, because I was at the helm, because I was, because I was. What are you milking? What do they call that on a ship? You're milking. No, no, you're not milking anything. <laughs> you were milking. I'm steering a you ship. You were literally just milking something. I was steering the ship. I think it's ships of, like this. And because I was steering the ship, it got steered over into the mud room, and then primer, and then mud, and then primer, and then over to you for your magic. So when Mark says this is a competition, it actually wasn't a competition because I did paint his car first. You painted the Cuda first, yes. yes. That's true. Now the pre-paint came out fine, right? There were a few yeah. breakthroughs, you had to address those. Yep. Then I did some primer work, got it prepped again, did five coats of the B5 on the car, and then did two drop coats and uh, cleared it and it looked amazing. Don't you cover the primer first though? Don't you intentionally cover the primer? One or two and coats, it? a little bit, yeah. One or two coats? Yeah. You told me that you like to make sure that it's covered completely before you start walking around the whole car. I know, but I tell you certain things, so. Right, like, yeah boss, I'll be sure and paint that roof. Stuff like that. The final paint was probably the best final paint ever because Pete and I came down on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you weren't even here. No, I wasn't here. Nobody's here. Pete comes in and got it painted, and that was a that was the best day. You were gone. It was just so that car was beautiful. It came out nice, and you could move it over to assembly. Very nice. Here's a '71 satellite station wagon, big and beautiful, but maybe you've never seen the strength that's built into a Plymouth wagon body like these rugged steel beams that span the wagon roof from side to side, and the steel roof rails that run from front to rear. They add strength, and they keep the roof from vibrating and causing noise. And look at this heavy steel construction for the wagon's rear pillar. 
four-sided steel beam support for the tailgate and roof. Up front, you'll again find four-sided box section steel members, this time above the windshield and at the sides of the roof. All Chrysler and Plymouth models get this same sturdy construction in these areas. Now the Neiman, I think, on the other hand, was a much, much easier car, or at least you made it an easier car. 71 Demon 340, right? Right. Shelton, that's the same car, FE5, Rally right. Red. Okay, for whatever reason, I think it's laziness, but whatever, he decided to paint it with a single stage paint, which is the same quality of paint, it's just a lot quicker than painting You told it. me to. I know, that. <laughs> I wanted so, it in single stage. Right. So how's that taking the path of least resistance when I do you what I was told. Back. So at the end of the day, no matter what, I did what you asked. Started with the jam work. We don't really do any cut and buff work on the jams. I usually put three coats on the jams, get all the jam work done, trunk floor, engine compartment, doors, fenders, hood, deck lid. So then in that way, at that point, we're able to put the car back together and then shoot it as one. So this car was a lot easier to paint because it's a solid color. It was done in single stage, so you're kind of in and out with just the four coats. Which was cool about this car, this is one of the ones I had Brody come in and actually be part of so he can see how the magic happens. And... That's true. Yeah. That's true, yeah. A little slow on the uptake. What's that? I asked him what the difference between base coat and single stage was, and he says the number of coats. Which... He didn't know at that point. Basically, the difference between a base coat, clear coat, and a single stage is uh, how many coats go on? Hint the teaching. He needs to and focus. You were, then you're doing that rocky stuff, and do you think that builds them up? It helps him focus, yeah, absolutely. No, it doesn't. I'm just here to kind of motivate you, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's like in Rocky Three when they're running on the beach, and Apollo's trying to get Rocky to run faster, and then all of a sudden, uh, she says it's okay to fight, and no, that's two. That's Rocky Two. Okay. <laughs> The bottom line is the cars, both cars came out great. Both cars were able to move over to assembly, so we could start putting drivetrains, wheel starters, and interiors and get them wrapped up, right? Yes, now, they were almost at the exact same pace, too. Within a few weeks of each other, each one of those cars was sitting in this assembly shop ready to be assembled. After the body and paintwork was done on the CUDA, Doug and I installed the drivetrain, which came out very nice. We installed the rear end, the front end, the front suspension, all the pieces that go in it, which is what? Yeah, give them a quick rundown. Torsion bars. Drive line. Drive line. Rear end, tires and wheels. Rear end, tires and wheels. Just call it as that, stick it down the road with no cam over bolts in it. We bolted everything down so that it was completely a roller so we could move it off of the lift and over to assembly. I'm doing this to help you to be better in your lit interviews as we move down the road with progress. We're trying to get the younger nice generation to watch our show. We're trying to edge into a younger Just do market. burnouts and show Touche. So it's, you know, it's typical. The demon was sabotaged, so it got put on the back burner. Nobody sabotaged anything, it was just Cousin Dougie. It was his typical distributor in backwards, leaves the oil filter adapter loose. It, it set you back a day or two just to get every, the camera guys back out there. But it, really, it ran great on the engine run stand, it right? Did, it did. That's the bottom Absolutely. line. Now, one thing to point out, because I, I just think if you missed it earlier in the episodes where I featured the induction system and what some of the things that make the Mr. Norms car is cool is if you bought this little Mr. Norm's package and I featured this a couple seasons ago you got well in some cases you were supposed to get a chrome uh, fuel pump but not all of them that left Mr. Norm's got it because they ran out of parts but intentionally you should have had the chrome fuel pump you definitely got 346 back but the carburetors are 427 Corvette carburetors right a very unique aluminum fuel log that had that fed the tri-power on a GM, or in this particular case, a six-pack. And the linkage, that was the hardest thing to come up with, was the Siegel linkage. This is a very unique system. It's mechanical secondaries. It's progressive, so you can set it wherever you want to. And uh, when you look at that system, you really realize what a, what a cool design people were doing way back then just to make that car run faster. And they ran plenty fast without all that. Uh, 
I will say that because we had a few setbacks with Cousin Dougie <laughs> and his amazingness, <laughs> you know how he gets on camera, right? I do. Everything's 10 times harder, and, 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 and I love him to death, but he just dummies up. He goes nuts on camera. Yeah. I decided to put the engine and transmission in for you on a weekend when nobody was around, so all we have is some GoPro footage. Beautiful. Right? Because I didn't want you complaining two years later when we're sitting here saying, oh, you made sure you took too long. Now, once our CUDA was a roller, uh, we could move forward with one of the first things that we'd like to do, which are the graphics. In this particular case, some of the graphics have to go on before we can even put the right. car together. The A57, A56 cars, they are really a neat, neat, neat design package from the very front bumper to the very back bumper. Now, you know, because there's, it, it's it, a combination, it's right? It's a combination of paint and trying to figure out where your paint goes and the graphics going to start. No information out there on Nothing. it other than you hope to find some original old car. And then I get the paint work done, I give it back to you and you just kind of hope it's in yeah. the right spot. Yeah, so it's a, it's a combination of vinyl graphics and paint. The hood scoops got painted, yep. you did those, but you also had to do a bunch of stuff on the lower part of the car that didn't get graphics, but the graphics would butt up to it. Right. And, and there's nothing you can do to make the two match. If you put a light on them underneath the car raised up in the air, you can clearly see where the decal stops and the paint starts. Right. But at the end of the day, setting out in the parking lot, you can't see that. No. And it looks like the whole bottom half of the car is blacked yep. out. It's just a really, really cool design. And that car getting all of its graphics on it, finally, once that was done and it was not easy, we were able to move forward with the rest of the assembly. Still to come, the cars have made their way through the body shop, paint, and into assembly. But the race is still on, and time is running out. We need to get that car done. Which A-body will make it to the finish line first? And will Mark ever admit that for him, everything is a competition? No, at the start of this, you said you're not competitive. Yeah, I Hello. lied. Find out when Graveyard Cars returns. All Chrysler Plymouth car bodies are completely protected against rust and corrosion by the famous seven-step dip and spray treatments. Special chemicals clean and coat the body metal. Each car body is dipped to a depth of 22 inches, so all lower body metal is submerged and coated by chemicals that fight rust. Even the inner wheel housings and galvanized body sills are covered with anti-rust primer. Unibody stays strong and tight for years. Like I say, the, both cars equally just beautiful in their own right. The, the lower ground effects, I think, were the most challenging over on the CUDA. Just because it, it was a matter of locating all the black paint, where it goes in space, and then and matching up the graphics. But as I say, when you stand back and you look at the car as a whole, and you forget all the misery that went into it, it's really a slick, it actually kind of scrunches the car up a little bit because the ground effects are black, right? Yeah, or correct. it looks like ground effects. So it really just looks like there's not very much blue there. Correct. So. We'll stick with that. Came out real pretty, real pretty. So when it comes to the demon, there was a lot of assembly that we didn't get filmed because there just wasn't time. We were just getting the car done quick. That's not why. He worked late nights and weekends with the guys so he'd make sure he won competition, so. I just, I just believe that truth bears investigation, my mother always used to say. We needed to get that car done. So you were at the point where let's just keep building, don't stop. If we can get, get footage, great. If not, we gotta get this car done. What about the other 102 cars here we gotta get done? It's actually 96, sir. And 96, yeah, well, that's a much better count. But my point is, if it's not a SEMA car or something you're gonna win oh, or lose, then they just sit here year after year after year while you're clicking selfies. So what, it is what it is. We're still able to get the hood scoops on, stripes, graphics. We did get to film a little bit. And we got to film some, and could have filmed we a got some out. <laughs> but it's fine, it came out real nice, yeah. Go on, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, you did. So when it comes to the Demon, the graphics were just as cool as they were on the CUDA. Because this car's coded for the, the rear body panel decals, and they were a two-part piece, which I didn't do. I got to watch him do it. They looked great. That's it? That's what, the, that's what I wrote down? No, it's just that you're just going to get off track. I wasn't going to do any such thing. I was going to say how cool they are. I agree with you. I think it's a very unique that you have to put one side down, but it, one side has to go down first. 
and you put it down, but if you lock down the two edges, mm -hmm. they actually have to go over the top of the other one, but you can't put the other one on first. You have to put this one on first to establish the location. So you have to leave an extra little bit of KY jelly in there, whatever the assembly lube, to keep it from actually uh, tacking down onto the body panel. Then you take it and you lift it up and you lay it down over the top of the other one. So it's a very unique graphic and it came out absolutely beautiful, just like the CUDA. Thank you. Yeah. Of course, a car that's going to deliver complete satisfaction must be a quiet car. So Chrysler Plymouth comes through with insulation that surrounds the passengers. It starts up front with a thick blanket of insulation on the dash, side cowl panels, and under the roof. This forms a barrier against noise, heat, and cold. Thick jute padding covers the floor under the carpet or rubber mats. Mastic sound deadener is sprayed on the insides of doors, quarter panels, and wheel housings, silencing these areas. Three-ply insulation separates the passengers from trunk noises and is also used under the package shelf. Even the rear roof pillars are insulated. Inner and outer steel panels of both the hood and the trunk lid are bonded together with adhesive mastic, prevents vibrations. An insulating pad under the hood is standard on Imperial and New Yorker, optional on other Chryslers and Plymouths. That's how unibody is silenced. When it came time to do the stripes on the Demon, it was actually- Which starts at V21 or the V6X? I'm just asking. The 6X. Okay, got it. They go down the side, there's two of them. Longitudinal. Right. And they look real nice. Yeah, they look great. And they great, fit the wheel but... arches. Notice how they kind of have cut out for, for the wheel. Oh, that's right, yeah. A little bit I of a... Yep. They don't. The other thing is the decal actually wraps into the fuel pocket for the opening for the... Now, that's true. And you have to paint the fuel cap, one half of the fuel cap, because when you twist it into position, half of it's red and half of it's black. Remember that? Could we do that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The only thing I will say about the graphics before we wrap this up, they're super cool graphics all the way around, no question about it. Have you noticed that the little character that's the devil on the demon looks just like Tony D'Agostino? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. If you look at it real carefully, it's Tony D. He's the devil? Well, he's a devil. So when you take a step back and you look at the Demon with the red, the wheels, the stripes, you know, you really see why people love these cars as much as they did. It's a fantastic looking little car and it's nimble and, and, and it's easy to drive. It's kind of like just a shrunk down B body, except you still, in this case, got all the power of a, of a big block in a small walk. So definitely a beautiful car. I think it ended up that the Demon did get finished just a little bit before yes, sir. the CUDA. We were, we were almost done with the CUDA, but one of the things that slowed us down a little bit was the assembly of the interior. If I'm wanting to see what a 70 CUDA looks like, I can go out back and look at 10 of them. Right. In this particular case, 69 CUDA Fastback, blue on blue. It's a unique package, so it's just difficult to find it. So that's really what slowed us down. I'm not making excuses. We, no, it was a lot of work. When the whole car was done, we still had the back seats, interior trim panels. Josh and Brian worked together. Mm -hmm. and, there was a, and they did a fantastic job. Just to say for the record, that was a really difficult car to put together, and they did a fantastic job putting it together. When you stand back and you look at it as a completed package, it really looks like a well thought out A-body. Yeah. I have a whole new respect for A-bodies based on that little Cuda. Looking at the interior in the car, how detailed it is. Everything has a place. Well, it's the blue on blue, but it has more right. of an eggshell finish on the metal right. on the inside. The two-tone seats the matching trim panels and armrests with just the right amount of chrome. Look at the rally instrument cluster, how beautiful that is. That was one the instrument special piece did. Yeah. And it came out so gorgeous. I just can't really overstate how much I really grew to appreciate and respect those cars now where I didn't necessarily before.
And, and for the record, I would not mind having a really key 69 CUDA. Uh, really? I wouldn't mind having one. Maybe an M-Code with a 440. Oh, gotcha. That could be a really cool car. Oh, you know about the M-Code cars. Yep. Here's a look at the soft foam padding inside a Chrysler Plymouth seat. The final touch in comfort for driver and passengers. Full foam padding is used on the seat backs of all bucket back bench seats. Bucket seats get full foam padding on the back and on the seat. Underneath the foam, bucket seat springs are formed to human body contours. Then the thick foam is slipped over the springs. You sit on nothing but soft foam and flexible springs. That's real comfort. One thing I will say is we're moving forward into our new season and we introduced Marty last year, the guy that used to work for uh, Stan's Upholstery. It is amazing what that guy can do and it's amazing that we got lucky enough to get him because just to give you an example, the only thing we couldn't get in time for the car to be shipped on the CUDA were the headrests. The problem right now is this is post COVID. So anybody out there in business who's trying to buy and sell and ship stuff knows that there's a supply chain problem. So our supplier, who's the best in the world, still can wait 12, 16, 18 months for interior pieces. Now that is getting a little bit better as we get away from the COVID era stuff. But we were on track for another six months before we would get those headrests. Marty built them by hand upstairs. We actually went to legendary interiors and they sold us the fabric itself and then we were able gotcha. to sew it up and make it look right. He is making them by hand based on an original pattern. And of course we bought the NOS material for it so we could get it done. But I would just like to say that what you're gonna see a lot more of this next season or two is our ability to be able to do almost everything in-house under the roof except for the internal engine work, the machine work on an engine. Other than that, we're doing everything else here. Well, that, and I guess we're not dipping them, but other, other than that, I think we're there. And yeah, I think yeah, that Marty so is one of the best things. So really, the more guys like Marty, key guys like you've got now in your paint shop and that you got in the mud room, the more of those guys we can round up, the faster and the better all these cars will get as we move forward. So once the headrests were done, we got them installed in the car, and that car was finished. Again, one of the fun things that we get to do, besides fighting all the time on camera, so much fun for everybody, is to be able to stand back and look at a car from its beginning to its end. And sometimes it's more rewarding than others. We've had cars that came in not too bad a shape right. and they left beautiful, we've talked about that. But this Cuda was pretty, pretty rough. Like I said, after it got dipped, it had a lot of stuff done to it. If you just look at the before pictures of the outside of the car, and then you look at the final pictures, I mean, that, that's the real candy, right? That's the stuff that everybody at home, like you said, they love to see the paint. Right. They love to see the, the pop. But Every detail in the car from under the hood, look underneath the hood of the, when we first started on it, yeah, like I said, they mess. cut out, yeah. Everything was cut out of it, had those big openings in it, butchered up wiring harnesses. And then look at it after we're done. All of a sudden, the, the engine, the transmission, everything is in place like it should be. The new aprons are in place. It just really personifies everything cool about that era of car. Move over to the interior. While it was a good, complete car when we started, there was no pop left in it. No. Now you look at the interior and it's 1969 and you're walking on the showroom floor. And walk underneath the car, same thing. Yep. Front to back, beautiful. Looks like a brand new car and it's the way these cars are supposed to be. Look inside the trunk, look inside the back end area of the car, the rear seating, look at the trim panels, look at the dash compared to the original pictures and that's truly a picture's worth a thousand words. When you stand back and you look at the stance, the sleekness of it, the graphics, the colors, the feeling that you get when you're looking at it. It truly is a miracle that we're able to put these cars back the way they were on the assembly line. Stay tuned. After running the gauntlet of metal, mud, paint, and assembly, 
Mark takes each of these ultra-rare A-body restorations to the streets for a road test straight out of the movies. You ever see Death Proof? Oh yeah. Remember the Nova as it's getting ready to crash into the car head on? But will Mark's dream drive be death proof? Or will it all go south fast and furious? Hey, this is broken. It fell off your car. Coming up, when Graveyard Cars returns. You know, when it came to our demon wrapping this car up, it was really cool to have because, yes, it's an A body, but it's a Mr. Norm's car. You look at little things like having the rally dash, the way the interior came out on it. Counts two seats. Right. Absolutely there's a, there's... stunning bench seat hounds too. The outside graphics like we've talked about before. The, the phenomenal paintwork, you know. It's the just... okay paintwork on it came out nice. The just the documentation on the car. The car is that was one cool. of the most documented cars, if not the most documented car we've ever done at Graveyard Car Day. I think we've said that a couple of times, and they're probably competing for that position. But when you're talking about original window sticker, original sales invoice, original Monroney, all these things, it just it adds to it, right? Right, absolutely. Then just like with the Cuda, you step back, look at the stance. That car looks slick. It looks like it's moving when it's sitting still. It's got the cool grill, the cool taillights which are demon-only taillights, by the right, way. Obviously. You need, oh, yeah, I know you knew that. Look at the before pictures. Look at the car when it came back from dip or how everything in the floor was destroyed. Everything, aprons, inner fenders, quarters, everything. And then all of a sudden, you look at it now and you say, wow, look at all the new metal on it. Look at the paint. Look at the look at the paint. The attention, yeah, no, it's true. I'm I'm willing. I'm big enough to give you credit for doing a good job. I taught you how to do a good job, and you got to say that. You can That's take right. it away from me if you want to, but you didn't come out of the womb and say uh, 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 PPG. <laughs> no, uh, I taught you that stuff, man. You did. I did. And I it's did. cool that after all this time here, we are still you doing the same thing. Butcher when I met you. Why are we doing all this? We're doing it because I think it's the guy that you had trained me would stand in the booth. Paint a car without a respirator and a cigarette in his mouth. Yeah. Oh. Well, I didn't say it was right. All I'm saying is, you're a great painter now, and you should pay a little bit of tribute to the people that okay. helped you. Let's cut right now. Here. No, we don't have to cut it's now. Just you could go down just... the hill. So the Cuda, unlike the Demon, happened to be blessed with a very beautiful day when it was done, and I was able to take it out on a flat-out road test. Here was my vision that I had. You ever see Death Proof? Oh yeah. Remember the Nova as it's getting ready to crash into the car head on? It's all these cuts, these cool cuts, like right over the roof shot down on the hood and a fender camera angle shooting on it. And you just, you hear the music and you speed it up and it, you just get the feeling it's going 100 miles an hour. You got the undercarriage shot. I got all these because I wanted to do something really cool. Well, it didn't work out that way because on the very last shot, I went over a bump and the GoPro fell off, rolled on the ground 50,000 times, and then it was ran over by somebody behind us, who after they ran it over said, what was that? Went back, backed up over the top of it again, picked it up and brought it to me and said, hey, this is broken, it fell off your car. So I did the best I could. The first few shots are dynamic, the rest of them are okay. But that car really ran and drove nice. And like I said, I have a great appreciation for the A bodies.
when it came to wrapping up the demon, it was unfortunate because it was raining here. So there was an opportunity for me to actually take the car out and get driving footage. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. Rain and casting dogs. I just happened to get a very short window to do the uh, driving footage that I took it out for, where I was able to get all the GoPro footage. So I tried to get got, hold of you that. Go ahead. So if you got GoPro footage, yeah. then I could have drove it and we could have filmed. No, you could have, yeah, for sure. No, I came looking for you. You were gone. Laser you never let me drive the cars. It was Wednesday. Don't that's you leave that's at like such one crap. o'clock. No, I remember that's it That's the only day you know that I leave her. No, that, no. Nope. No, I would have let you drive the car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but at the end of the, the day, car. the car came out great. I'm super proud of both of them. And he's just keeping me down like usual, but I'm used to it. See that compliment he gave me like a couple commercials ago? Yeah, gone. No, yeah, I still admit all those things. But you keep me down. But I'd never let you drive one. I've seen your driver's report. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I didn't know it was a felony. <laughs> I don't have a felony on my driving record. So for our millions of fans around the world that get to watch these two little A-bodies get loaded up, you get to know that beautiful cars, restored correctly, and yes, they're A-bodies, and we don't get a lot of A-bodies here, but we did them, we did them right, the owners are happy with them, they're beautiful cars, I think. Absolutely. I think. We got them both loaded up and sent home to the owners, and we have heard back from both owners who are both very happy with their cars. Yep. And at the end of the day, I think that was a good thing to have done at Graveyard Cars. And a pretty good... And you got a whole episode of... I got a whole episode of two, two A-bodies, a -bodies, so. which people at home are going to love. Yeah. And me, doing a lot of that. You know, actually, your production team said a lot of times that you talk too much and people get tired of hearing your voice, so I needed to be in this interview to help break up your voice. I'll be darned, huh? I don't think I got that memo. No, they, they told me. Okay, they told you, did they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, turns out that's the fact, folks, that uh, apparently I talk too much and Will needs to be more involved in a lot of these interviews, so sounds good. Thank you. Yep, my homeless friend. Please get a new apron. I'm gonna something. order them. They're like $12 for two. Ooh, you just put it on the company card. I buy them for you anyway. No, you don't. Just shave your beard. Next time we do one of these, you're gonna have your beard shaved and you're gonna get rid of the I'm never shaving. And my hair ain't going nowhere. Are we done, Pete? Okay. You ever heard of Nair? <laughs> That'd be yeah. so bad. We used to put it in people's jock straps in school.